right, so let's do an example of the mean value theorem as it applies to a very, very simple exponential function. This is about as simple as it can get, aside from x squared or x to the first. So we have f of x equals x cubed, and we want to see, uh, we want to use the mean value theorem to see what its mean value is over this interval, 1, 2, so a pretty small interval. So the first thing we have to do every time we uh, have a mean value theorem problem, there are two steps. The first step is to plug A and B into the, in, uh, the mean value theorem formula. Of course, this is A and B is referring to the parts of your interval. So this is A and this is B, kind of self-evident. All right, so let's go ahead and start plugging things in. We're using the original function here. We're not taking prime or doing anything. We're not messing with the function yet at this point. So let's go ahead and take prime. So the bottom, I'm going to not take prime. I'm sorry. We're not taking prime. We're just plugging things into the mean value theorem. So the bottom is easy, b minus a. So it's just 2 minus 1. This uh, shouldn't be giving anybody a headache, that kind of math. And now on the top, we're going to just go ahead and just put parentheses. Uh, and do your function where you have your x's as opposed to try and putting in values in the beginning because that can kind of mess with your head sometimes, cause you to make mistakes if you're going a bit too fast. So we have x cubed minus x cubed. And now, if this is b minus a, this is also b minus a, f of b minus f of a. So I will also use orange marker for these numbers. So we have 2 minus 1. Now, this math isn't exactly hard to do this type of arithmetic, but I want to go and do every single step just so that nobody gets lost, uh, depending on what level you're looking at this from. So, 2 cubed is 9, okay? So we have 9 minus 1 cubed is just 1. 9 minus 1, and our denominator is 2 minus 1, which is 1. Now, uh, anything over 1 is just itself. So let's just ignore the 1. What's the, what's the point of having extra numbers up there when we don't need them? So 9 minus 1 is 8. So our first value of importance is 8. We plugged everything in to the mean value theorem, and we got 8 from our original function. So 8 is our first value of importance. So let's go ahead and keep that down. And then, well, you know, I probably don't need to erase this work. We can just keep it up here for reference while we go on and do the second step which is to take f prime of x, take prime of the original function, or take its derivative, and then set it equal to the answer from your mean value theorem initial calculation. So we're going to be setting it equal to 8. So let's take prime of this. x cubed prime is, bring down the 3, and then lower this power. So we have that x cubed prime equals 3 x squared, because we're taking this power and we're subtracting one from it after we pulled it out. So this right here is our ddx for the original function. So this is our second useful number. So we have 3x squared. So these are the important things. Now all that's left is to set these things equal to one another. So we have 3x squared equals, and well, we can probably fit all of this on here if I give us a little bit more room. We have that 3x squared equals 8. So the first thing to do is to divide both sides by 3. Now, it might seem intuitive to just go ahead and take the square root of both sides, but if we did that, it would cause some problems and it would cause some very ugly math. So it's a lot easier for us to do this first. Let's just go ahead and divide by 3. So, take divide by 3 of both sides, which is going to give us a nice, clean x squared over here, equals 8 thirds. Now, obvious next step is we're going to take the square root of both sides. This is just going to leave us with x equals the square root of 8 over 3. And now that's not crazy useful to us because once again we want to know the actual value, right, of this function. So we know that x equals 8 over 3, but 
What's useful for us here is finding a mean value, and a mean value is going to be a number we can actually plug into a useful application if we were using this for a real world, a real world problem. So uh, radical 8 over 3 is roughly equal to about, once again, I said roughly, not exactly, because you're only going to get a rough estimate here, 1.632. Nine, nine, and it's, it's going to go on for several numbers. But this is the answer that we get for the mean value theorem. So a quick recap. We took our original equation, f of x equals x cubed. We plugged in b and a, which is from our interval 1, 2, into the mean value theorem formula. We got that 8 was the answer. We took prime of this which was 3x squared. We set 8 equal to 3x squared and got that x is equal to radical 8 over 3. And we took a uh, decimal approximation of that, which is 1.63299, with a lot of numbers after it. So that is how you would apply the mean value theorem to a simple exponential function. Okay, yes, uh, you all probably noticed that I made a rather glaring and stupid error in that video. Uh, right after I said, and this math isn't that hard to do, I went ahead and said, yeah, now 2 cubed, okay, that's just 9. So, yeah, that's not going to be the case. Uh, here is what I'm talking about. Here's a screenshot from that video. Uh, when we were doing MVT for this, I said 2 cubed minus 1 cubed <laughs> equals 9 minus 1, which is 8. Well, it should have been 2 cubed, which is 8 minus 1, uh, which is just going to be 8 minus 1, which is 7. All the rest of the math checks out on here just fine. It's just going to change our final answer from being x equals radical 8 over 3 to x equals radical 7 over 3. So an amendment to that is now that we need x equal to radical 7 over 3. That's the only change we need to make. So my bad. I apologize for that.